Hello, this is the Alchemy Kitchen, and in this video, I have already smoked and made a spatchcock duck in the smoker. Um, I just did a video, a review on this meat thermometer, a wireless Bluetooth meat thermometer called the Armeter A1. So I really wanted to give it a trial. So I use this for the smoking process, so we're going to kind of see how that works, and then at the end, I'm going to give my final thoughts on this thing after using it. So what I did is you want to poke a bunch of holes in the skin, just through the outer layer of the skin, not all the way into the meat. You use like a metal skewer or whatever, just so it makes some holes for that fat that's under the skin to render out. Um, I used kosher salt last night on it. I spatchcocked it. That's where you cut a strip out the back. So it's spread it open. It's going to cook more evenly that way. Put in a lot of salt last night in a pan to brine it. Wipe the excess salt off, then put some rub on. Now I'm going to get it in the smoker, and I want to run my smoker hot to render the fat. So I'm going to try to run it around 150 Celsius. I got to look what wood chips I have. I do have uh, hickory. It's going to be a bit strong. I don't mind that, but I'm probably going to mix in some alder or apple wood. I got to see what I have. If you have like a fruit wood, that's perfect for this. So let me get it in the smoker and get the fire started. Just did a quick video review on this last night. Now I want to really put it to the test and see how good of a range I can get with it because smokers here, barn is there, downstairs, garage is up there, house is up there. So it's nice if I can get a good range to keep an eye on the temperature and not to babysit it. But it should take maybe three to four hours, hopefully, to smoke this. So let's get it on the smoker. So when it's spatchcocked, it's important to get the wing tips kind of tucked under so those don't cook faster and kind of burn. Um, I will put probably like a bit of a honey glaze on it every hour or so. Any spice rub you want to use. This is just like a barbecue kind of generic grilling dry rub. Uh, I got the thermometer into the thickest part of the breast. And I set it for chicken. So that's 165 internal temperature when it's done. Right now it is 32 degrees internal temperature. So uh, I've got the app connected, this running, and just set it here right by the smoker. Close this up, fire starting. I've got some, got some alder wood and some hickory chunks. I'm going to mix that with lump charcoal. I want to get it up to 150 Celsius cooking temperature uh, for the smoker. I'm also going to put like a pan or cast iron skillet under the duct to catch the grease, the fat. Uh, duck fat, duck grease is really good ingredient to cook with. So we'll get this fire started and get this closed up and start smoking. So I just made a glaze for it and brushed it on. Uh, that's honey, soy sauce, a bit of uh, balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper, and I just used a whole orange for the juice and a little bit of chili powder. Brush that on. I'll probably reapply it every like hour or so. So I had the dock uh, just by the smoker on the table here. And when I went inside about halfway into the house, I noticed I checked and I didn't have connection anymore. And since it's on magnet, I just threw it here up a little bit higher, more in line of sight. And I'm able to get all the way to the other side of the house and still get connection. It did drop, I noticed. I don't know, I might have went upstairs or something. And the walls are really thick, so... You know, I, I didn't expect miracles for that. But I do get signal all the way to the kitchen on the other side of the house. And when I came back from going inside, it made an alert, like a sound that it reconnected. And for some reason, it looked like the app was closed. So I had to restart the app, but it still had the same time. It sets a timer for when you start to cook, and that was still going. So a little bit strange, but I guess I'll figure it out. I'm um, curious to see, like, I'm pretty sure if I go up in the garage or do a lot of work, I'll get a signal. I'm pretty sure when I go down to the barn, it's going to be, I'll probably lose signal at some point, but I'm going to kind of test it out. I had just woken up when starting this, so uh, I think I was saying Fahrenheit or Celsius instead. So the target temperature is 73 Celsius. I forgot to change the settings on the app to Fahrenheit or just Celsius. Uh, I want to get the smoker to about 150, which is going to be tough in this weather. I don't have a ton of wood and coal, so 
I'm going to do my best. And worst case scenario, I just finish it off in the oven. So a couple things I noticed about this docking station is once it's picked up or moved, the light will come on automatically. That's kind of cool. Um, also, where I place it, a small difference makes a big difference. So if I'm trying to go over that way, I put it over here as opposed to like there, as opposed to a few feet the other way, it really seems to make a difference. Um, another thing about this, I know it's not showing up good, the light's bad, um, but the screen here, if you push the button once, it's going to show the ambient temperature probe. And push again, it's going to show the target it's set for, and then probe one. So it's kind of cool. You can use it without having to grab the phone every time and check all that. So unfortunately, it was just, it was cold outside. It was getting late. It was taking longer than I wanted. Uh, I ended up putting what's called a Texas crutch. I took a piece of tin foil and wrapped it. Just because it was about 10 degrees short of the target temperature and it was just going to take too long and I was getting low on fuel. Getting the smoker in that weather up to 150 Celsius is tough. Um, so I tried the Texas crutch and I wrapped the whole thing around the probe, everything, and it lost connection. So I had to poke a hole where the probe could stick out. Uh, just this little ceramic part and then it was fine. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. I mean, had it connection, you'd have to be really, really close for it. So not a big deal. And from there, just the app, that's really useful. You can see when you push trend, the data of the heat, how much it's rising in what amount of time. And I could tell that it's going to take at least a couple hours if I could even maintain that much heat, which was getting tougher and tougher the colder it was getting. So I figured, all right, time to just turn on the oven to 150 Celsius. And I went and put it in the oven, use the probe, and it, as soon as it hit 74, I pulled it. And I have to say, that is probably the best duck I've made so far. I mean, it was cooked perfect. Unfortunately, by then, light inside my kitchen is terrible for, for even photos or filming. Kitchen's kind of crap right now from remodeling and messy. So I didn't, I just ate, I didn't have time to mess around with the video. Fortunately, my girlfriend got a few photos, but like I said, the light in there's terrible. So it's not the best, but at least you can see a photo of it. But it was really, really good. I mean, without this thermometer, it's it's a lot of guesswork to get that perfect internal temperature. So like the everything, the, the fat was rendered just right. The skin was just right. And what I really liked about it is a lot of times if you want that kind of rare breast meat, you end up the the legs or the thighs are not cooked as well where they should be. This, I think it was part to do with the spatchcock. It, everything just cooked perfect. The breast was perfect. The, the legs were perfect. I mean, it was really good. So good. I was at the store today and there was a duck again for sale. And it's like, I'm getting a duck again. I don't care. It's not cheap, but it's worth it. it I mean, it, so we had that for Christmas. I love it again for New Year's because turkey's overrated. Duck is so much better or goose. I was looking at a goose today, but I think they wanted a 35 year old for that and it was marked down. No, no, uh, but yeah. So, um, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with this. I'm going to now go over all the kind of little details I learned while using it. I'll try to cover pros and cons. I mean, they were nice. They sent me this for free, but, uh, this is an honest review. If they do send me an affiliate link like they mentioned, I will put it below. If someone wants to pick one and then get a discount, and I think I get something at a couple price cents out of it if you buy it through my link. Uh, but really, I'm not... Them sending it to me or the affiliate links are have no influence over my opinion and my review on this. Uh, so now let's get down to those little details I've noticed while using this. So now I just want to point out some features I kind of discovered while using this. 
that stood out for me. And then I'll go over like a rated review on everything about it. Uh, one thing would be just ease of use. It is pretty cool. I mean, the docking station charges the probe. As soon as you remove the probe, it's on. And these are connected. Um, you can use it just like this. You don't need to use the phone, which is nice. The phone just kind of adds to it. Just like this, if I push the button, right now it's just telling me the, I believe it says P1 for probe one. That's the temperature it's reading. I'm holding it in my hand, so my hand is 15 degrees. It's cold in here. Push it again, and that's going to tell you the ambient temperature. If it's below 50 degrees, it won't read that. That's Celsius. Um, once it hits 50, then it starts reading the ambient temperature. Push it again, and it's going to be a blank. That's normally where you're going to set, I believe, your target temperature. And then it's back to showing the probe temperature. So once you set the target temperature on the phone app, it'll read here. And it'll stay there even if you disconnect the phone. And it'll alert you. So as soon as it hits the target temperature, this starts making all sorts of noise and turns red. So that's pretty nice. Um, another thing cool about it is when it, it, the light just turns off after a few seconds, if I sit still. And then as soon as you pick it up or move it, it turns on by itself. Which is, that's pretty cool when you're working in the dark, like this time of year, there's not much daylight. So you put this back in, it's going to charge it and it'll turn off. Uh, I didn't put a dent in the battery. There's a little USB port, a micro C USB port, USB C to charge it. Supposedly it gets 72 hours. So that is convenient. The magnet on the back is cool too. Decently strong. Uh, you just, you don't want to put it right on your grill. I did that with like one of those little charbroil ones and I left the grill for a while and it was really hot and melted it. So, uh, I mean, it's very convenient though for just setting it different places. Uh, one thing I did when I pulled the, I tried to use a Texas screw. I tried to wrap my food in foil to just get that eternal temperature to where I wanted it faster. And once I wrapped it in foil, I wrapped the whole thing with the probe, it lost connection. I mean, it went through the my steel uh, smoker, no problem, which is pretty thick walls. But I saw another video, a guy put it in a cast iron Dutch oven, and unless he had this thing right up next to it, it would lose connection. So even in those cases, you can still use it. It's just you're not going to have a constant read. Every once in a while, you're going to have to like open it up. You don't have to lift the lid of the Dutch oven at least, but you're going to have to put it very close, a few inches away, and it'll give you a reading. Um, so, I mean, that's maybe a, that's something to consider depending on how you're going to use it. Like tonight I'm making, I'm doing it in the oven and being lazy, uh, some pulled pork. So I already know it's in a Dutch oven. It's going to be in there for like four hours. And then I take the lid off for another hour. And after I take the lid off, then I can actually put, I'll bother with using the probe and that'll tell me when the internal temperature is where I want it. Um, the app. All right, I had some ups and downs with it and some learning curves. I did, a lot of it was user error. Um, there are some weird issues I noticed and while I'm going throughout the house. When I get out of range, it beeps. It's going to tell me. It's, already, it's almost like your phone's ringing. It beeps a few times. And you know, okay, you're out of range. For it to get back in range, if I took a couple steps back, it didn't just pick it up right away. Sometimes I had to get a lot closer. Um, where I put the docking station really made a difference. So my smoker's on wheels. Next time... If I wheel it out from where it's at, it'll probably fix a lot of the issues. But I found like if where I'm really pushing the limits of the range, if I kind of position the docking station to where I'm going to be, that helps. Uh, it does. It's good at alerting you when you go out of range. Coming back, I didn't notice if it does or not. It's not until I have to turn it on and kind of like, okay, now it's back on. It'll pick up where it left off as far as showing you the time and I think it, you don't get all the data while you're gone. The, your, um, when you push trend, it's going to show these, uh, this chart of the ambient and internal temperature. So that's a little kind of finicky, but I mean, it, it's show me a Bluetooth device. It isn't when it comes to stuff like that. I did take some screenshots and I think some video on another phone of the app while it's running. And I had to actually restart the app a couple of times. That was Mostly, that was my fault. Uh, I was trying to use another phone that had the app installed, and somehow one connected and disconnected the other one. And obviously, it's like a speaker, you don't have 
two phones connecting at the same time. I couldn't get my phone to connect. I couldn't figure it out. I thought the thing was crap. And then I thought about that and I realized the other phone's connected. Disabled that. Problem solved. But I did have to restart the app and the time and everything. You know, I had to start it all from scratch. So not a big deal, but something to keep in mind. There is, a, like any app, there's probably a little bit of a learning curve to it. For the most part, it's pretty intuitive. It's pretty easy to use. It's pretty flexible. I mean, what I like is you can set like medium rare and it'll suggest a temperature, but you can adjust it up or down. Um, the app graph, what I like about it, especially if you're cooking with not like using an electric or propane smoker, um, it's really good because I'll try to show a screenshot. You'll see like dips in it. And that's usually when I added more fuel or open the door. Normally when you add new fuel, more fuel, it's normal. The, the temperature is going to go down. It's going to dip down and then start coming back up. So you'll see those and you can kind of, it gives you a good idea. Like if I put this much fuel on, how much it's going to raise the temperature over how much time. And also when you're seeing the internal temperature rise, you can see like, all right, it's going you know, one degree every 30 minutes or something. And it gives you a good idea of how long you're, you're going to be waiting for your stuff to be done. Um, as far as the connecting to the app and stuff, that was super easy. It's kind of strange. You don't even have to have Bluetooth on when you have the, when you pull the probe out and open the app, it turns Bluetooth on for you and connects. Kind of strange, but I mean, it's one less thing to mess with. That's where I hate the phones. And I mean, that's what's, a pro about this is you do not have to use the app. You do not have to use the phone. You can use it standalone. You can use both together. So that makes it pretty convenient. So now let's get on to the overall ratings. I'm going to use, I guess, a one to 10 system. So the ease of use for the device itself, I give it a 10. It's super easy. Um, once you involve the app and the phone, that's got a learning curve, which is normal, but okay, I'll give that an Let's say seven. Um, yeah, I mean, part of it was user error, but yeah, I'd say about a seven. Uh, the accuracy and the speed seems to be extremely good. So I give that a 10. Battery life also. I mean, I ran it for probably a good six hours total, and it still says full charge, three bars on the battery. Claims 72 hours, so yeah, it's battery seems really good. Uh, also, the phone use with running Bluetooth and the app, it didn't seem to make anything noticeable as far as draining my battery on my phone. The range for the dock itself, it says, okay, it shouldn't be more than, I think, 10 feet away. So, I mean, if you're, it's close to the grill, I had no issues with it, except if it's covered, that changes the range. And then if you try to put it in a container inside a grill or a foil around it, I guess that's the issue with any of these wireless ones, though, so... I'll give that a seven for the range, for the dock. For the Bluetooth range, I also give it a seven. Uh, it's probably got a good range if you're like sitting, standing in a field. But then, what, yeah, I mean, when I know I'm pushing it to extremes, the way this house is set up and the thick walls, I have issues with even the Wi Fi without a repeater here. With a repeater, I still have it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's pretty decent. It does, it's, it's definitely something that I can work with. So, I'll give that a seven. Overall features, I mean, there's a lot of cool little features in it. So I guess overall rating, I would give it, let's say, an eight and a half. I don't have some of the other ones to really compare it with, but I've checked out videos on it. And I think for the price range, this pretty much, it, it really competes with some of the top end ones I've looked at. Uh, I'll definitely be giving it more use. And you're going to see it in some of my other videos. I might find more things I like or dislike about it. So stay tuned in future videos for that. Uh, I'll put a link to their website below. They have this in a, a more economical version and extra probes, different things like that. So I didn't see anything in the, the really well-known ones that are a bit more pricier that would make me uh, justify spending that much extra money on one, to be honest. Uh, the only thing which I would have to compare for myself, that would be a factor, would be if it could extend the range somehow. So that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Till next time.